So this is the location we've selected for our frog and toad abode. And what we're going to do here is basically dig a very large hole, fill it full of rocks and stones and leaves, cover it with a protective slab and let the frogs move in and the toads move in so they can hibernate for winter. And conveniently, it's right next door to a pond. Our first job is to clear away all the stones. Let's put these in a bucket. Sacrifice these rhubarb leaves. They can go in the compost seat. And of course, all this cardboard provides a very rich habitat for all the things that the frogs and the toads and the slow worms would eat. Wood lice, centipedes, slugs. I've disturbed the slow worms home, I'm going to have to make alternative arrangements for accommodation. So, all this old cardboard I'm going to put over here on this other area. So hopefully all the wood lice and worms can move back in again. And a nice big chunk of cardboard. So, that's our slow worm habitat, that's our temporary slow worm habitat half completed. Now all this cardboard does look a bit on the dry side so give it a quick soaking just to help all the wood lice and the worms get to work on it. The next trick is the black plastic, which they tend to like a lot. I'm going to put that over the top, like so. down with a few stones. That's the great thing about the black plastic sheet is that it absorbs the heat of the sun which makes it a good basking area for the slow worms. It means they can warm up in the morning sun because they need that extra heat to get going. So apologies for moving you. I hope you can move into a new accommodation and it will be very happy. End of story. It's moving into the new home straight away. Well I'm going to carry on with this uh, preparing the frog and toad abode area. And all this ground here hasn't been cultivated for many years and it's actually quite rock solid and very dry so I'm going to give it a quick soak with the watering can. And this just sort of helps to change the structure of the soil and makes it much easier to dig. Really good soak. Another old friend of ours, the beetle. These, these are the good guys because these are serious slug predators. Frogs and toads don't really tend to live in ponds, they just need it to breed in. They do spend most of their time under rocks and stones and pieces of wood on dry land looking for their food there, which is why it's so important that we create these additional habitats for them. Well that's a whole partly emptied for our frog and toad abode. Might just trim it back a bit further at the back there, make it a bit deeper. We're now on to the next phase of our construction of the frog and toad abode. As you can see, this is the sort of shape it's taking. It's about a metre, three quarters of a metre long, about a third of a metre wide. And we've dug right down into the subsoil there to make it really deep. The next job we're going to do is just dig up that subsoil a bit to break it up to make it more of a suitable kind of burrowing area for the frogs and the toads so they can dig right down into the subsoil when the frost comes. Here, middle, it's deep. It's quite soft this stuff, it's all just clay. It's really quite well drained so there shouldn't be too much water collecting in the bottom of this. dug to the depth of about a fork, so it's a nice rich deep layer of subsoil they can get right down into and that will not freeze during the winter, that should remain at a fairly even temperature. Let's do a quick check and that is to my calculations about 18 inches, that would be 45 centimetres there about, plus the depth of the subsoil underneath. Right, it's time to add the first layer of our frog and toad abode on top of this broken subsoil we're going to add some nice crispy dry leaves and that should form a nice insulating layer to 
keep out the cold. I hereby christen this frog and toad abode Toad Hall. autumn leaves. I've got the bottom layer of our frog and toad abode uh, more or less completed. The next thing is to put some walls here to support it as I'm going to add a concrete slab on top of it to protect it and to keep predators out. So let's put a few courses of bricks down. That's one there. Leave a few little gaps in between so they can crawl in between the, between the gaps and hide if they have to do. ready to have roof laid on top of it. Alright, carrying on with the creation of our frog and toad abode, I've managed to find some rather nice old roofing tiles in the skip, so I'm going to put that on that side and go on this side. That should help to prevent all the topsoil from pouring in once I start to fill it all in again. Looking at the bottom, a sort of frog's eye view, this is what they're going to be living in. And I've added a few little gaps here at the back between the bricks there and there so that they can climb out and burrow into the surrounding soil if they want to. So it's not an enclosed space by any means. We've got here a big bucket full of fantastic stones that we've dug out of the ground. I'm just going to tip these in as our first layer. Even spread them out. And that creates a kind of layer at the bottom. Frogs can sort of nestle in between those stones. Well, that's a big bucket full of pieces of wood. So that's the next layer of frog and toad abode. Okay, so the objective here is to add another layer on top. What we need to do is ensure there's plenty of air gaps so that the frogs and toads and various other things can sort of creep in and find little crevices that they can overwinter in. So we have to be sure not to pack it in too tightly sort of layer it very carefully to leave those gaps. So let's add some wood. Centre. Lots of air gaps they can hide under some cavities, lots of crevices. Once these all start to rot down nicely and attract wood lice and uh, other creatures that the frogs can live on. This is a bark from a tree, a nice big hole in there that's something they can hide in. That in the corner. Yay! That's, that's the lower layers added. Now the next layer is a very important one. We're going to add some nice crispy dried leaves. And we'll form an important insulating layer to keep the cold out. A nice big bag here in the leaf base. Council very kindly dropped all these off for us. And they're just perfect for this. It's already starting to take shape, so we'll just add some more pieces of flat wood. So let's add some stones. Now this will give a nice protective layer to keep out any predators. I'm going to create a reasonably even layer. This still allows for any gaps in between. That will allow our friends to snuggle down in the crevices there. Another layer done. I think on top we just add another layer of leaves. Just give it that extra layer of insulation against the cold weather which will come. You know, no doubt we'll get a very heavily frost this winter, as we often do. We want to make sure our frogs and our friends are completely insulated from it. So that is nearly full to the brim. Look at that. And add a bit of cardboard. Again, more insulation, but also things like wood lice tend to really like cardboard, so this will attract lots of uh, little beasties here that can come in and be eaten by the frogs and toads. Before I put the roof on, I'm just going to build a little tunnel following this line here, dig a little trench under the grass, leave the turf in place. And it should come out right here by the water's edge. We'll just 
digging a trench here about four inches deep in between frog and toad abode and the pond. So allow the frogs and the toads to move between the pond and the frog and toad abode without coming into contact with any predators. I might climb out here, be under a paving stone here and through this little tunnel, through the weeds, way under this stone here. Oh, I might have to find some pieces of old roofing tile. So I'll squeeze that in there. And that forms the roof of the tunnel. Let's add some topsoil back on top of this. The grass will no doubt grow back on top of that in no time at all. You won't even know it was there. And this nice piece of limestone forms the final piece of the puzzle allowing a nice little entrance area that folks can get through I've got the turf back we can we shouldn't have any trouble finding that I don't think I'm going to put the roof on our toad hall all this cardboard back where it belongs and a nice cosy uh, hibernation area but I think it just fit just nicely there against the entrance to the tunnel well, there it is, a completed frog and toad abode with the roof on, with the tunnel already and set to go. All we've got to do now is wait for the frogs and the toads and the needs to turn up, which they inevitably will. They should hopefully spot this area and find a way in. There's plenty of gaps and crevices. They'll spend the winter in there, and when the weather warms up in the spring, they can all come out again. There's a load of happy frogs. Happy toads, happy newts. I hereby declare our toad hall is now open for business.